Hi, I'm Jasmine. Today we're at Bulagul Station and we're really excited to meet Elder Roy Kennedy. Good morning, Mr. Kennedy. Good morning, kids. How are you? Yeah, well, my name's Roy Kennedy. Um, I'm, uh, I was born on the 24th of April, 1932. So that makes me 86 years of age. Who are Nampa? Nampa, that's my tribal area. That's north of here. Or north. Once you get over the Lachlan River, that's you're in the Nampa country. Uh, we're more or less known as the dry land people because out north, further north, uh, there was no running rivers or anything like that. And the only running water we had was the Willandra Creek. In the winter time, we merged up into the scrub country where we could light fires and stuff like that. And in the summer we come down onto where we've got the cool breeze coming in from the west and so on. And we are now standing in Yimpa country on uh, the north side of the, the Lachlan River. Where did you spend your childhood? Yeah, I was uh, born in Condoblin on the Lachlan River, brought back to Ivanhoe, out to the scrub country, smaller town, and taken out onto a property where Dad was a, the actual manager of the back property of Marfield Station called Carrara, it was at those days. Dad went as a sheep and cattle drover then, and we moved around with him from town to town. <laughs> Can you tell us about your family? Seventeen of us all together. But Dad was married twice. But he married sisters. His first wife passed away when she was only young and he was five children he had to her, four girls and one boy. And uh, then he married, he got mum in as a housekeeper. So rather than have her housekeeper, he married her. What are the best moments in your life? You know, if I lived to a thousand years of age, I'll always remember Marfield because the great times we had there. Like, uh, I even went to school on Marfield. We had a travelling school teacher. He used to travel around by, had an old car, and he'd come in and he'd, uh, he'd do a fortnight at our place. Then he'd move on to the next property and he'd work his way right around until he came back to us. His name was Alec Fraser, a brilliant, very brilliant teacher he was. During the Second World War, uh, when people were virtually starving around the cities, you know, they couldn't, couldn't get food and stuff like that. A lot of them eating out of garbage can. But we were living like kings out there on, on Marfa. <laughs> uh, and like we had cows to milk. Mum used to milk cows. We had five cows, I think, and we, we had plenty of milk, cream. Mum, mum was a brilliant cook. She could make her own butter out of the milk and cream and stuff. And Dad was a good butcher. He could kill his own sheep when he felt like it or kill a bullock whenever he wanted. So we always had plenty of meat, plenty of yeast bread and stuff like that. Uh, mum used to do all the cooking previous to that in camp ovens, big camp oven. And then they put one of these big, oh, metis, I think, metis stove, wood stove. Well, wow. should have seen mum. It was just like giving her big electric brains <laughs> <laughs> or a big gas, gas half of everything. Well, she went crazy, she cooked everything, you know. But, uh, it, you know, the, the atmosphere was brilliant, you know. We'd get dust storms out there and love every minute of it, you know. Yeah. But now if you see a dust off and running inside, shutting the doors, pulling the blinds down, yeah. <laughs> turn the TV off. What was Marfield Station like? From one day to another it was great, you know. Yeah. And we lived out there, peace and quiet. Tell us about your family. Dad was such a great stockman that he was really in demand, you know, all around the area. He, he was uh, the only drover in New South Wales back in 1952 that handled so many thousand head of stock in one year. He broke a record. Burke, Canyon, Broken Hill, White Cliffs. What we needed, we made ourselves, you know. He said, well, come over to Griffith. He said, oh, I've got a place over there. Plenty of grape picking. 
So I had to go, <laughs> I had to go out this grape picking. And I don't think I picked enough grapes to make a bottle of wine. <laughs> <laughs> I said, Roy's out of this. So I said, this little black duck's leaving here, you know. I said, I'm going back up north into the cattle country. <laughs> anyway, I went out to Nicarbo. It was a station hand, as to call them then. And I stayed there for two years. So I saved up and I bought me some motorbike, brand new. Back in you motorbike, Roy. And plenty of clothes. R. M. Williams gear was the it was the go in those days. R. M. Williams. You had to wear R. M. Williams that. So I had a port full of them. And I said to the boss one morning, I said, look, I said, uh, cheering's finished. I said, everything's you're all right? He said, Yeah, I'm all right. I said, I'm gonna pull the pin or so I'm leaving. He said, What? What are you gonna do? I said, oh, <laughs> I'm going to work that out when, when I get to town because I'd been to town a few times on the motorbike, see, for dances and stuff like that. So I said, I'm going to hit the bright lights. He said, oh, I said, you won't like that. <laughs> he said, what are you going to do? I said, oh, I'm going to go shearing for a while. So I went shearing for a while and oh, that's hard work, <laughs> I'll tell you. But I didn't mind it, so I got enough money to buy myself a truck. So I started the carrying business then, you know, I was carting everything, wool and I finished up with a mail run from Ivanhoe to Kenya. That was all right, but there wasn't a great deal of money in it for the roads were that rough, you know. And you wanted a new truck every six months. <laughs> the roads were that damn rough, you know, but rain you couldn't move. No bitumen in those days. There wasn't even any in nothing no bitumen in the main street. <laughs> but uh I stayed on that for a good while, long time, and I finished up in Wakanya because I was getting a lot of work in Wakanya, carting wool from Wakanya to Broken Hill, to the railway line, so. And that had a bitumen road halfway, and that was good. So I used to load the wool up and cart it over there and bring, bring fuel, backloading fuel from Broken Hill to Wakanya, and then do the mail run down to Ivanhoe. I finished up DMR, Department of Mine Roads, when I was there, so I got onto all the plants, you know, graders, I finished up on a grader there, and, and in 1960 they said, we're moving the depot to Hay, do you want to come down? I said, yeah, I do, mate. How did you meet your wife? I used to eat in this cafe there, and I used to go in there for a feed, it? Anyway, I was away for a while, and I come back and this girl was working in there, so. I cast the eyes over a few times and I thought, you know, she might make a good truck, he's missus. <laughs> so I, I threw her a dandelion, because <laughs> she fell for it. And, uh, oh, every time I'd walk, she'd be waiting for me. At the, what do you want, steak and eggs, ham and eggs? What do you want? <laughs> Whatever you got there, darling, I used to say to her. We've been married uh, over 60 years. <laughs> So everything worked out pretty well there. My mother lived to 100. Oh, wow. 103 months she lived there. And passed away in hay. And we took her back out to Ivanhoe and buried her. Yeah, well, this, this is the uh, Moscow Post Office, or was. And over here is where the hotel used to be, the main hotel. Moscow Hotel, and out here there's a big hall, town hall out there. And down here is where the police station was, and the hospital. That's where my father was born, down here. Mm. So uh, that's all gone now. But, uh, Moscow was a big town back in those days. And for the railway going through Ivanhoe, it ruined Moscow. Cemeteries across here, you can go up on the Bellwinnel Road and go into the cemetery. Oh, change in my life. It's just been unreal. Like transportation, like for a start. Like sort of internet and going from a typewriter to a computer. Well, from Ivanhoe to Melbourne, with a truckload of wool, it would take about two and a half to three days. Now it takes about eight hours. How do you describe yourself? 
the main thing is, is, as a husband, because as a husband, you got a wife and a family to look after. You know, so that's that's a very important part of the business is looking after your family. You've got to see that they're right and steer them on the right road, you know, to come out on top. Life's good. In some cases, it's a bit too good, you know, because you rely too much on that easy living. And if the time happens to arrive where you've got to go and do something, it's a bit hard. That's when you fail, you know. So <laughs> I think we're getting pampered a little bit. Egos drifting back when I was young and free. When we all lived together around the old wilga tree. We were all so happy there, my family and me. And we often sang together around the old wilga trees. <laughs> Should have brought me guitar then. <laughs>